coming up. We started out on Sesame Street. Um, we lived in the projects when we were kids. We didn't have a lot of money, and my mom was just always trying to find a way to make money. I played Baby Doll, which is oh. a character that I'm really known for. And then I also was on The Cosby Show. I did that for a while. And then wow. I was on Different World, and then I did movies with Denzel Washington, and then I wrote Baps, and that's starring Halle Berry. You wrote Baps? I wrote Baps, oh, yeah. Oh no, like I'm in the presence of a legend. Being a woman of color, it seemed like the roles that were available was either being someone's maid or someone's, you know, piece yeah. of meat. Did so, you ever experience that as an actress in the business or you had a more fortunate career? You know, Tamara, um, that's a great question, right? And the answer is, Yes, I, I did feel suicidal at times. This week on The Trailblazers, we have the beautiful, the gorgeous Dr. Troy Byer coming out of Los Angeles. Thanks to all our current partners and sponsors. If you are interested in sponsoring or partnering with The Trailblazers, send an email to thetrailblazers247 at gmail.com. Some of our most prominent producers of them mm -hmm. in the industry tell Tony that he could not bust a female artist because wow, failing is one thing. Failing publicly is is a is a very hard thing. My father always said he was growing a prime minister. Had I said I was all in my mouth, the lies were going, and I put I sat and I saw women on the TV just lying bluntly, just just like that. At least all media survey when you look at the name Ron Mushet, zero, what? zero, zero. And then they send back to say that they apologize. The lady up there never put in the note. No, seriously? Um, in terms then, of help, help or like, I was cleaning. Yeah, my mom was, a, yeah, my mom was a helper back then and stuff. To be honest, I was just excited, mm. you know, to play for us I did it and I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. What, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values, you do the right things, it'll fall in place for you. That this week on the Trailblazers, we have the beautiful, the gorgeous Dr. Troy Byer coming out of Los Angeles. And I mentioned a bit of it earlier in my preamble, but trust me, she has an impressive resume. So she has acted with stars like Diane Carroll in Dynasty. She's, uh, I understand, a director. You direct, she directed Love Don't Cost a Thing. She's yes. done so much things in Hollywood. And she's a force to be reckoned with. And now she has a PhD and even doing greater things in psychology. So let's make welcome the lovely Dr. Troy Bio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to be here. So yeah. I don't know if I got, hopefully I got everything right. But I do mm -hmm. understand that you also, because love don't cost a thing I should mention is like my, one of my favorite. That's Excuse fine. Me. Thank you. So Sorry. Love, love Don't Cost the Thing is one of my favorite movies. Like as a teenager, as a little girl, I love that show. You actually directed that show? Yes. I don't know why I'm sneezing. Uh, but it's fine. You know what? Where I come from, when you sneeze, it means you're telling the truth. Yes. Bless so me. you're telling the truth. You're kicking out some truth here. So thank you. Yeah. But actually, normally when somebody sneezes, we say bless you. So bless you. Oh, thank you. I accept all the blessings. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I directed that movie. You know, that was a remake of Love Don't Cost a Thing. I directed it, yeah, and I rewrote it, yes. It was uh, based on Love Camp, uh, Money Can't Buy Love. Uh, that's the original. Oh. But I did a rewrite, and yeah, Love Don't Cost a Thing. And I directed it. It was really fun. Wow. And your resume, because when I saw even earlier photos of you and I was like yes I remember seeing this lady when she was acting in all of these movies because I'm somebody even though I'm a young millennial I love watching like classics and right. you acted as Diane Carroll's daughter in Dynasty yes that's right I was her daughter and when I auditioned for the part there was no part we created that my manager and I using visualization it's really? not like it was an, uh, yeah, it was not an audition. There was no such thing as Diane Carroll's daughter. My manager and I, we saw that Diane Carroll was on the show and he said, why don't you be the daughter? And I said, well, that's what I've been visualizing. So we went after it. Wow. Okay. So I'm impressed because even already hearing you talking about visualization, we're going to go a bit more into all of that. 
But first, tell us how you got your start in Hollywood because you have such an impressive resume. I was actually watching an interview you did on Steve Harvey and I was like, wow, this lady is amazing. So tell mm -hmm. us, how is it that you got started in the industry and starting out so young as well? Yes, I started out on Sesame Street. Um, we lived in the projects when we were kids. We didn't have a lot of money. And my mom was just always trying to find a way to make money. And so she heard about Sesame Street and my brother and I went to audition. And my brother got on first because I was afraid of Big Bird. <laughs> so, <laughs> they didn't cast me. And then I went back two days later and I proved that I wasn't afraid of Big Bird. So then I got to be on the show. Wow. And, and how yeah. old were you at the time? I was four. Whoa. So you started from you were a toddler, like a, a, a baby, pretty much. Yeah. I grew up in front of the camera for sure, without wow. a doubt. So by the time I was 42, you know, I'd been in show business for so for 38 years, right? Yeah. By 38 years, you're ready to retire. Yeah. So it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey indeed. And separate from what I just mentioned, other than like Dynasty, you were also in a very popular show as well back in the day. Uh, the Five, can you remind me what the name was? Uh, the Five Heartbeats is a movie yes. I did. I played Baby Doll which is oh. a character that I'm really known for. And then I also was on the Cosby show. I did that for a while. And then wow. I was on different world. And then I did movies with Denzel Washington. And then I wrote BAPS and that's starring Halle Berry. You yeah. wrote BAPS? You wrote BAPS, oh, yeah. Oh no, like I'm in the presence of a legend. <laughs> what is that man? Yeah. You I wrote, wrote BAPS. I love that show. That's great. <laughs> That makes me happy. So yeah, I wrote that and Halle Berry did a great job with that. And then, um, yeah, I just started getting burnt out. Honestly, I was getting tired. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for 38 years when I was 42. That's what I said. Yeah. So that's when I decided to make a, a change, you know? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. But I mean, I love the fact that you have all of these experiences. So even from that early age and being a part of the, the Hollywood scene and being an actress for so long, it was definitely something that you were passionate about and you loved, right? Yeah, I loved it. I mean, it was all I knew. You know, I didn't know anything else. So uh, it was just fun. And it's, it's just, I actually thought, here's something. I've never told anyone this. When I was a little girl, I thought that everybody was on TV. Really? <laughs> Uh -huh. I thought everyone was either on Electric Company, Zoom, or Sesame Street. Oh, wow. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that it was just me and the whole school that was on TV. I thought, oh, no, you're on. What time do you do Sesame Street? And they're like, we're not on Sesame Street. <laughs> Crazy. But, you know, as a child, I would think that everyone was on a show, right? Yes. Why not? Indeed. Everyone goes to school. So you grew up. So pretty much you grew up in Los Angeles. I grew up in New York. Oh, in New York. I moved to Los Angeles when I was 18 mm -hmm. because I needed to be in Hollywood. If you want to make it in Hollywood, you have to be in Hollywood, right? Indeed, indeed. And so what was like, I mean, we talk about the passion and these wonderful experiences you had as an actress. Yeah. Well, what were like for you, because you, you're a beautiful woman, you Thank know, you. So what were, I'm sure that that's a plus definitely, especially in the acting and the film industry, but what were some of the challenges that you also faced? I think a lot of my challenges initially is that I wasn't dark enough. So really? when I, yeah. So when I'd go up for black roles, I wasn't black enough. And then of course I wasn't white enough. And so then I started going up for Puerto Rican roles, yeah. you know, Latinas, pero you know, because I can talk like this, you know? <laughs> And then that was fine until the Puerto Rican, the Latinas started getting pissed off at me for taking their parts. Oh, yeah. And rightfully so, right? Yeah. So I often found myself in the middle of like no man's land. Like, where do I go? So that was a challenge. The other thing that was a challenge is I wouldn't, I would not do sex scenes and I wasn't going to do nudity. I mean, I did a little tiny, eensy, beensy bit of nudity once. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't going to have some guy on top of me going to town, you know. Yeah. 
you know, that's just not my thing. You know, I mean, it's okay if it's your thing, but it's just not my thing. Mm-hmm. So that was also a little challenging because being a woman of color, it seemed like the roles that were available was either being someone's maid or someone's, you know, piece yeah. of meat. So that was challenging. And then when I started directing, the studios didn't want to take me seriously. You know, even after love doesn't cost a thing, I still have problems finding an agent. Really? Yeah. It, even today, like if I wanted to go get an agent, I've got movies that are cult classics, basically, right? Thank God. I, I probably still couldn't get an agent. Wow. That's interesting because movies like that, which, which were a hit and were so popular. So it, that's very interesting. So you are definitely, because you mentioned in terms of being a part of no man's land, because, so you're biracial. Which one of yeah. your parents is black? My mother's black and my father's white. I identify as black. but I am biracial. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. So, I mean, I am actually just thrilled just hearing that part of your story. And it's interesting. I was actually reading an article about uh, an actress. She was a part of uh, Princess Diaries and she was actually sharing. It was um, Anne Hathaway's best friend in the first Princess Diaries, but she was actually sharing that her experience as an actress was just so difficult and at times she even considered even giving up even even suicide so did you ever experience that as an actress in the business or you had a more fortunate career you know Tamara um that's a great question right and the answer is yes I I did feel suicidal at times and I think it has a lot to do with the constant rejection yes And the constant need to sustain yourself and be and look and act a certain way, even if it bumps up against how you're authentically feeling inside, you're not allowed to be that and feel that you've got to put it on and keep it on and keep it going. And, you know, a human being can only generate at that level for so long. Now that I know what I know about psychology, Mm -hmm. it's actually its own form of psychosis because it's a, it's a forced way of being that's not congruent with who you truly are, yes. right? So I can totally get why she would feel that way and why a lot of actors and actresses feel that way. What other job could you possibly pursue in which you're constantly confronted with rejection? Constantly. Mm-hmm. Every audition is either a yes or a no. Yes. Unless you're a big film actor, but even then you've got to deal with the critics Mm -hmm. who needs all that. Yes. So it gets to be a lot. Yeah. I'm really happy not to be in that industry anymore. Wow. 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 So what, uh, what kept you going then in those moments when you faced the rejection, because it's part of the industry, but you didn't leave it. You were still in it. What kept you moving? Girl, I had rent to pay. (laughs) That's a good answer. Okay, I have some bills. I have some purses. I have some Gucci shoes to buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. I love that. It wasn't because I loved acting or I felt so fulfilled. Yes, I loved acting whenever I got the opportunity to act because I love being other people and having an opportunity to really immerse myself in something yeah. else. But that's so few and far between the opportunity to to really act. So it was because I had bills to pay. And it's the only way I knew how to make money. It's what I've been doing since I was four years old. Yes. I didn't have a college education. My mother always said, as long as you're pretty, you'll get a job. So I had to always make sure I stayed pretty. That was basically my job. And that's how I supported myself off my looks. Really? Yes. Yes. So and I, I, I really appreciate that honest and authentic answer because mm-hmm. indeed, as you mentioned, your image played a, a crucial role in what you did uh, as an actress. And it still does, as we know, in the Hollywood scene today. So yeah. therefore, like for persons like myself who mm-hmm. do a little bit of acting and would even yes. one day want to venture into that in a major or a bigger platform like What sort of tips would you say that we would need in order to make it in the industry or at least to make a head start then? You would need a really thick skin, right? Mm -hmm. You just really need a thick skin and you need to want it really, really, really bad because there are going to be a lot of 
Mm, I hope not, but there might be a lot of occasions in which you have to question who you are and why you want it. So you got to really, really want it and you got to have a thick skin. And if you really want to be in the business, look to see why do you want to be in the business? Do you, you want to be a star? Is that what it is? Or do you want to have money? Or do you, are you really an actor and you want to act, you know, like look to see what's your inspiration and don't fool yourself. But a lot of people just want to be famous. And the great thing, yeah, is that today you don't have to be an actor to be famous. You can just do a sex tape. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) That's why you have to know what you actually want to do. Yeah. Like understand what, and listen, if that's your, that's what's motivating you because you want to be famous, good for you. This is your life. Wear it out. You do you, boo, whatever works for you. But just be clear on what your intention is, because whatever your intention is, that's what that's going to be your motivation. Yes. Yes. And I love that word intention. In fact, that word keeps popping up because I do actually host, uh, co-host a radio uh, segment of a popular radio show here in Jamaica. And so I do an inspirational part of the show. And the word that I had this morning was actually be intentional oh so, yes yeah, so just hearing you say that and then when i was talking with my mom on the phone about i don't even remember what we were talking about but i just remembered she used the same word like you have to be intentional i was like whoa oh, so, so hearing that again is like to me like okay that's like a confirmation of how we should approach whatever we are going for in life all right so you know you did the acting scene You've, you've done the directing, you know, made a name in that era for yourself. And then I understand you later decided to study psychology. Tell us, why did you decide to go that route? Because I was going bananas. I was losing my mind, honestly. And I thought I need to, I need to get a grip on myself. So I started taking transformational courses to understand my behavior and in, in, in my pursuit of wanting to understand me, I started to understand human beings and how we're all hurting in some way, shape or form. And there's just no safe way to express these unwanted emotions so that we can get them resolved. So one thing led me to into the another and another and another. Next thing I know, I've got like my bachelor's degree and then I'm like, oh, I'll keep going and I'm getting my master's. And I'm like, I guess I might as well just go and get a doctorate. And, you know, because I was so thirsty to understand human beings and how we're designed, because I felt like if I could understand how we're put together, then I could understand how to take us apart or take apart the pieces that don't work. Yes. Right. It's like dismantling a watch. Once you can take that watch apart, you can always put it back together. So I was interested in learning how to help people dismantle the parts of them that don't work and then put in the parts that do work. Starting with myself, by the way, I was a hot mess. I was just, un- I couldn't even deal with me. I was like, I can't do you today. I just can't. <laughs> At least you're honest. And I mean, it's good. And that's uh, the first part in healing is understanding where you are and where you were. So, I mean, yeah, at least you're you're authentic with yourself. And we appreciate that because none of us are perfect. I do understand, though, because I was watching an interview you had done on the Steve Harvey show. And I saw another clip, by the way, somewhere else. And they were mentioning that you've actually you yourself, you're famous. But obviously, being a part of that circle, you would have dated some famous gentlemen as well. Uh, including, I understand, Quincy Jones. Is that correct, or was it a no? Movie? So Quincy is my godfather. I did not. Did not I oh, did not. so that was that. What that that report was not accurate. It's a good thing I asked you. Yeah, um, yeah. It, I can understand how people can be a little thrown off by that information. But what happened? I was I was living in a homeless shelter, and Whoopi Goldberg, who was my next door neighbor when I was a kid. Yeah, but her name was Karen. She had just done color purple with with uh, Quincy, and I ran into her after not seeing her for years. She's like, "Oh my God, I'm so happy to see you!" And I said, "I'm so happy for your success," and blah blah blah. And she's like, "Where are you living?" I said, "I'm in a homeless shelter downtown. I'm in LA trying to, you know, become a star." And she's like, "Oh, you're not going to live in a homeless shelter. I'm going to introduce you to Quincy Jones. You look like his daughters. I know he's going to fall in love with you, and he's going to take great care of you." And that's exactly what happened. Quincy took me into his home as his daughter, and he wow. loved me as his daughter, and he gave me such an amazing life and opportunity that I would have never had without him. 
Wow, that is amazing. And kudos to Whoopi Goldberg as well. I actually remember visiting uh, recently, I was in New Jersey in December to, to January of this year. And uh -huh. my, my aunt and my uncle, they were telling me that they actually know where she lives in New Jersey. Like she has a house in New Jersey. So yeah. that's amazing of her to, to do something like that, to make that introduction for you. Yeah, but she was. You mentioned something at the top of the interview, which I want to touch on. And then we're going to go into your programs. You mentioned that the role that you did with Diane Carroll, you did it through, you, you got that role through visualization. Yes. Tell us in depth, what do you mean and how did you actually manifest that? Well, I took a picture of Diane Carroll and I put it on a piece of paper with some glue and then I put a picture next to me and then I put the word dynasty on the top because what happens is what we, we become a magnet for that which we desire. Where, wherever our attention and our thought flows, that's where our manifestation power is. That's where it goes. It's like you become a magnet. So I started really vibrating at that frequency that I am Diane Carroll's daughter and everything is energy. And so wherever your frequency is at, that's where you're going to be matched. If you're down here, you're down here, right? If you're up here, you're up here. So my, I was vibrating at the frequency of being Diane Carroll's daughter. And that's what I pulled to me, you know? Wow. Tune in next week to find out how Dr. Troy Bayer has used visualization and manifestation, as well as her Mindology Fitness program to switch your mindset and achieve success. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, I am Tamar McKeel, television and radio presenter, producer, communication specialist, and of course, producer and host of the Trailblazers series. I'm inviting you, yes, you, to join the family. All you have to do is just click the subscribe button right below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're alerted as to when we have new episodes. And then join our family for weekly inspiring episodes that will not only lift your spirits, but will give you the tools, the keys, and the strategies that you need so that you can walk in your purpose and blaze your trail. Thanks for watching.